Well, it is absolutely wonderful to be here with you all today. Even though I can't see everyone, uh, it's wonderful to be here with you all. I'm really honored to have the opportunity to speak before you. Um, just to maybe set a little context for, for why I'm here and, and sort of how I view us here together today. Um, I'm standing up here to share with you an idea that I have, but it very much depends on you sharing with me your positive feedback, both while you're sitting there, but also afterwards. Um, for me, in, in terms of solving problems that we have in today's society, it has to be something that's done through a collective conversation, and I'm a, I'm a big believer in the notion of collective wisdom. So this is just my little piece of the collective wisdom that we need to move forward with. So thank you so much to SIT for inviting me here today. And um, I'm going to change the title of my talk um, just for fun. Actually, the, the title is fine, but what I, I really wanted to call it was The Resettling of America. But I thought that would have been a little bit hard for people to understand what I was talking about without a little context. So the name of my talk is The Resettling of America. And what I mean by that is, and it's, I guess, an homage to um, one of my favorite thinkers and doers uh, here in America by the name of Wendell Berry. And he wrote a book uh, a number of years ago uh, that was given to me by my mother. So shout out to my mom today, um, called The Unsettling of America. And basically, it's a story, for those of you who may not have had a chance to read it, is the story of how our agrarian society here in the United States was transformed by industrial agriculture. And to me, that was a metaphor for the way in which our global economy has transformed cultures and communities all over the world. And so I, I felt like that, the idea of resettling America is not just America, you know, the 50 states, but the concept of America that we feel is something that should move forward in the world. And I think if you look around the world, the, the American notion of what economy is has spread rapidly. And in some ways, it's spread faster in places like China and Asia than it has um, here in the United States. In fact, it took us several hundred years to get to where we are today with uh, the global economy as we know it in the US. It's happening in several decades in places like China. So um, I feel as though we're at a pivotal moment in our, in our history as human beings. And that sound, might sound kind of trite. And what I really mean by that is it's a pivotal multi-generational moment and that what really is happening is that over the, the lifespan of people that we've met, our grandparents, perhaps great-grandparents, and when we become hopefully grandparents and great-grandparents or friends of grandchildren, um, that that period of time is going to be a, an important transition to a new uh, resettling of America. Brattleboro is a great place to be for this uh, talk today because I think the seeds of that resettling are happening here in many ways. And the one that I wanted to just point out today is the uh, Marlboro College MBA, Managing and Sustainability. Um, it's one of only three schools in North America that focus, focuses its business curriculum exclusively on the notion of what it means to be a sustainable business leader in the world. And so this is a great place to be for that. And I'm really pleased to have a couple of my colleagues here today from that school and to share with you some thoughts I have on the next generation of business leader school. So let me, let me give you a sense of what that might look like. Um, perhaps a little bit of background. Um, I started out m my um, adult career, if you will, wanting to fight um, business that I thought was doing bad for the environment. I went to law school specifically over 20 years ago now to do that. Um, and so it's kind of interesting that it's taken my life to get to where I am now that I actually don't want to do that, but I actually want to teach people who are going into business. And I want to learn from them as well, because I think m many of the great things we have today is the result of the innovation and entrepreneurship of, of people who are in business today. But there's problems with our, with our system, and that's, that's what I want to focus on today. Um, <clears throat> so, all right, I have a little prop here, which I'm going to hold on to now. Um, oh, that was cool. Um, so the next business school, um, the business leader school, is, is, uh, is what I, I want to share with you now. 
Um, in many ways, the global economy that we've created today has taken hundreds and hundreds of years to, uh, to change, and so I feel as though what we're doing now is beginning to make that hundreds and hundreds of years of change occur. And I was talking with a, uh, a commercial fisherman friend of mine earlier this week who was giving advice to, to a friend of his who's also a fisherman about how to deal with a, a personal health problem that he was having. And, and he said, you know, it's like when our nets get tangled up and you have to spend time untangling that net and it doesn't happen easily, but if you keep working at it, you eventually get it untangled. And I just thought it was a, you know, a, a really beautiful metaphor. And I, I, it, it occurred to me that's sort of what we have to do as well. And if you can imagine if there was a big tangled up net up here, that I would probably want you to help me do that. Um, and so that's, that's the way I see us unfolding uh, the solutions to the issues we have with our global economy today. And there's a really important um, leverage point in that global economy, and it's the business leaders of today and tomorrow. And that's not to, to point a finger at them, it's just to note that we, we do have a, a global economic system now where there is a disproportionate um, impact of a, of a few who have a great influence on the rest of us. And rather than simply treat them as others, um, I think we have an opportunity to, to sort of see ourselves in them because we're all part of the same economic system that, that they're largely um, driving. So rather than suing them in court, which I would have wanted to do 20 years ago, I want to have a conversation with them about what it means to create new leadership um, in the private sector. And I'm not giving you data um, on why I think that's true, but if you, if you could easily find out that if you took all the money that NGOs, government, private, private, private donors put into to making positive change in the world, and you stack that up against the the money that flows through our global economy, it would pale in comparison. So imagine if the, global, the monies, that, monies that flow through the global economy actually were doing, doing the work that all of us would also like to see done. So that's my, my premise for why we need new business leaders. Okay, so I guess if we're gonna start a new school, we have to have a school motto. And uh, this, this might be dating me, but I remember the beginning of the, the movie Animal House, where they cut to this um, statue, and there's a statue that says, knowledge is good. Um, which I, I just, actually, in some ways, not to, not to be too critical of the current educational system we have, but kind of is a little bit like what actually happens in college sometimes. Um, you get knowledge, but you don't actually get um, what, what you need to actually be a successful member of, of uh, society, I feel. So my motto for the new business school that I'd like to create and that I need your help with, this is just a sketch today uh, that we're going to fill out to pick the colors and we may make it three-dimensional, maybe a sculpture, I don't know. Um, there's this uh, um, natural resource manager, scholar, writer from many years ago by the name of Aldo Leopold. And he wrote about this uh, problem with uh, cattlemen out west who were um, basically killing wolves in order to protect their herds. And it's not an uncommon scene to have that sort of conflict. And in his description of why he thought that was the wrong thing to do, he said that the cowman, and that's the term he used, uh, should think like a mountain in terms of the longevity of his decisions that he makes and understanding where he came from, how he got there, and where he needs to go in the future. So my school motto under the statue of I don't know, I need, I'm going to need help with this, is think like a mountain. Um, I'm going to also use um, Professor Leopold's uh, uh, famous um, concept as one of the founding principles. And I, I only want to come up with one today because I don't think I have time to sort of lay that all out, but there's a lot of other people uh, and ideas that I wanted to sort of include in the founding principles. But his is one that I think um, really sings true. And I haven't heard it in a long time in the in the context of, of discussions of problem solving. Um, but So I wanted to share it again with you. It was written um, as part of his book, The Sand County Almanac. And it says, a thing is right when it tends to preserve the integrity, stability, and beauty of the biotic community. And it is wrong when it tends otherwise. So, um, 
I'll, many people might interpret that as being just you know nature protectionist, but I actually view us as part of the biotic community, and and I love the fact that the way he describes that it the tending tendency towards preserving integrity, stability, and beauty. So it's not a it's not a prescriptive thing. It's not telling people you shall do this or that, but it actually is allowing them a place to find themselves in. In, in the solution. I think that's a really important thing that we need to allow business leaders to find themselves in the solution going forward. So, um, core curriculum for, um, for our new business leaders of the future. And uh, that's why I have my, my pitchfork because when they come up to school, wherever it is, perhaps here in Vermont, um, they're gonna, you know, you always get swag when you're when you show up somewhere, and this is the swag they're gonna get, um, and they get to keep it, <laughs> and hopefully use it. Um, this the first course of my core curriculum is called Food for Lives, and um, basically it's a one to two year practicum where they will spend time, uh, be given the resources to start. A, um, a farm, a sustainable farm. And they will have certainly people who can help them, um, advisors, farmers to give them advice, but their job is to think about the farm uh, for several generations going forward and to develop a business plan and to work the farm in a way that that business plan could be realized several generations out. And while they're doing that, obviously, they're going to probably take some other courses. I haven't thought about that because there's other people who know that um, better, finance courses or accounting, I don't know. Um, but I think they spend most of their day on the farm, um, working the farm, talking to farmers, uh, trying to figure out how to make uh, that farm productive for their grandchildren, their great-grandchildren, and how they can actually leave something like that. And that's the other thing that I think we don't think about in today's global economy is what are we leaving our children and our grandchildren. Um, I'm, I'm wearing my, you know they have this term power suits or power ties. Well, I'm wearing my, my power corduroy jacket today. And this is something that I got from my dad when I went to college and it's about probably 60 years old. And uh, I'm going to hand it down to my son at some point, but I'm not quite ready to get rid of it. So, um, but I think we need more than just power corduroy jackets to hand uh, down to our, uh, our children and grandchildren. And so I think part of what this business leaders school is about is, think, is getting them to develop business plans that have that in mind. It's not just handing over the pizza shop, if you will, or the global financial firm to your son, but it's thinking about the community and what, what they're gonna leave uh, generations to come in the community. So you can't just work all day um, on the farm. You have to have some things in the evening to do. So music is, I think, an important part of our education, which I, th I feel as though um, business leaders and actually everyone should have the opportunity to do. So in the evening, um, there'll be courses in taking musical instrument lessons, and you have that as an option. But most importantly, you have to learn to sing harmony. Um, and uh, I don't know if anybody's sung har harmony before or have tried, but it's a wonderful experience to, to try. And when it works, it's just this incredible feeling that you get that um, if you can just imagine, it, it, it for me sort of makes me think about, well, how do I figure out how to create harmony when I do the work that I do? And so I think that would be a really important lesson for, for the business leaders of the future. Um, Reading, writing, and no, no, no. <laughs> Try it again. Reading, writing, and no. I'm going to say reading, writing, and doing nothing. Um, and um, this is what I call the uh, um, opportunity to reflect on what you learn every day. And so I want to, um, I have enough time that I think I want to model it together with you guys here today, if you, if you would allow me to. And you know, when you're under pressure to get talk in a certain amount of time, you feel like you have to rush. And so I want to slow things down. And I just want to take 30 seconds. And I want you, everybody to take a deep breath. Exhale. 
And for the next 30 seconds, we're just going to enjoy uh, the quiet together. You can close your eyes or not. It's beginning now. Okay, so take another deep breath, exhale, and now we're going to talk about a reading list. <laughs> so again, this is, this is incomplete, and, um, and uh, you know, it's just my, my initial reading list, but here's the reading list. We're going to start with Thinking Systems by Ned Danella Meadows. Um, it, Sustainability Institute is right up the road. Um, she's no longer... Uh, with us, but in many ways she is, and this is a fantastic book to give you a sense of what we really need to form the foundations of solving our global economic problems and what business leaders need to read. I could only bring one of these, but just about anything Henry David Thoreau wrote, absolutely. This one happens to be Walden, appropriately. <clears throat> the Challenge for Africa by Wangari Maathai, Nobel Prize winning uh, environmentalist and social justice movement leader from Kenya. This is, this is re a really beautiful uh, book about how the development of America affected a very important part of our country that often gets forgotten. It's called Nighttime Comes to the Cumberland, a biography of a depressed area by Harry Caudell. Moving across the Pacific to a book by a Dutch scholar by the name of Carol Van Wolfren. This is a book called The Enigma of Jap Japanese Power, and it is an incredible insight into another culture that's important to us. And moving quickly, because I saw them shaking, the um, Malalai Joya, Raising My Voice, the youngest member of parliament and first female parliament member in Afghanistan. An incredible book. It will change your life to read. Woody Guthrie, Bound for Glory. If you haven't read it, you must. And just about any book by Wendell Berry, but this is a great book of essays, The Art of the Commonplace. And he writes about work as pleasure, which many times um, it's not these days. And one more, How Europe Underdeveloped Africa by Walter Rodney. And I think this is important to understand um, in order to know where we, we are going, we have to understand how we got here. And uh, this helps us understand uh, the impact of, our, of the last 300 years of development of the West. And since I have 25 seconds left, um, for summertime reading before you start school, Edward Abbey's The Monkey Wrench Gang. <laughs> so um, I hope you'll join me as a future faculty of the new school for business leaders for the future. And I greatly appreciate the opportunity to share with you my idea and I look forward to hearing your thoughts throughout the day. Thank you very much.